So before I tear this apart, I want to show you guys current setup. Now this thing is bolted down, or was bolted down. But basically under that, that's what that looks like. Now this thing doesn't actually cool too bad, but I keep having to re-bleed it, so something's not right with this setup. Now I already started to take off some stuff. Uh, this one's from the steam port from the LS. And then you get your overflow. And then on the front side, that's the feed to the water pump, which is right here. And then this is the return. For the heater hose, that's the feed right there. And then the return is right there and it actually hooks up to, to the feed for the water pump, which is not a good design. <laughs> and then I added this for the steam port because I was having problems with the other one. So this is now hooked up to the return, so the same line that this one goes into. And I just capped this, I just literally removed it for this video. But this would be where the steam port goes. It goes here, goes in there, and then goes through the frame, goes up, and then goes to the radiator. Now I did add some ducking because it was kind of overheating on, on the freeway, like when it's 100 degrees out. Um, they helped out a little bit, but not to the extent that I was hoping for. So I'm going to take this off and let's start working on the new setup. Alright, so I was going to reuse this radiator right here, but if you guys look closely right here, it's supposed to be like a dwell pass, so it goes down, goes to the other side, and come back out and exit this way. But this is supposed to be like a divider right here, which it's still there, but that's like where it's tacked. I guess I was already having issues with this, but basically fluid goes in, and because it kind of, like I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but it kind of goes up a little bit, it's curved. So instead of being flat, it kind of curves like that. But some of the fluids already bypasses and just goes back to the engine. So no wonder the car was starting a little bit warm. So installation wise, looks like I didn't do a good job because, you know, that was hard mounted with a little bit of bushing or rubber. And then the same thing for the top, but basically I had a crossbar here and it looks like it kind of gets compressed a little bit. I mean, I guess it could also be overheating, but I didn't really overheat this right here that much. Or it could also be just poor materials. With that said, to me, this still needs to be welded, which I'm surprised they didn't do. They just did like double tack on both sides and I guess that's supposed to keep all the, the fluid or majority of it going around. But let me show you guys this one. So this is my new Summit Radiator. If you look right there, that's welded all the way around. So even if, let's say, I don't install this correctly again and I get that little flex, it should bubble up here instead of being flat, it should bubble up a little bit, but it would still keep all the fluid from, you know, doing the full pass instead of getting bypassed or some of them bypassing. So if you guys are installing a dual pass right here, I would highly recommend that you guys look for that weld right there, otherwise you'll kind of experience what I just did with the, the other radiator. Uh, for the fan, I will be using my old fan here, and the way I was kind of thinking is, this is gonna sit just like that. Well, it'll be a little bit more towards the bottom. Like that, so that will be flush right here. And I'll make a guard for right here, so just to prevent from any air from bypassing going this way instead of through the radiator. It is a little bit bigger, guys. So, not ideal fit. I also did buy a Taurus fan, like a Ford Taurus, uh, I think from like a 93 or so. Now that one fits perfectly here, but then I had a hard time trying to figure out how am I gonna mount that without adding a bunch of you know little tabs to to mount it and whatnot and it doesn't come with like little tabs like this it's just like one side is it has where you could you could bolt it but the other side it was just like completely flat so I think this is gonna be a little bit easier and I do like having two fans like this instead of a, a single speed this fan though is about four pounds heavier than that so it is a little bit heavier all right, so I did some prep work guys here. Clean up both sides. As you guys can see, that's where the old bracket was right there. So now we are reset and ready to go. So I got some bar here from Home Depot. Let's go ahead and start cutting this and mounting the fan. I am working on way too many um, separate projects right now. It's just that when I bought some stuff, some of the stuff didn't come in. So I'm kind of working on multiple things at the same time, but also trying to record an episode for you guys. So hopefully this comes out somewhat good because, yeah, I think uh, I recorded everything, maybe. Good part, I only need one, so. I went to Home Depot without measuring this thing, or well, what I needed, so I ended up buying two.
All right, so we have a two-piece ready here. I'm gonna go ahead and place it like that. And the height is gonna be dependent on our fan. So we'll build like this. All right, so I found some bolts that we're gonna be using. So let's go ahead and measure it out again. So I'm gonna go ahead and flush the top right here and then uh, adjust from the bottom. I think I should actually go, let me show you guys this. So that corner right there is really close to the fan. Um, but I think I can go a little bit more until it hits this part of the radiator. This side is pretty close. So we'll be good here. Maybe a little bit more trim. I think we'll be fine though. So let's see what's hitting. Looks like it's like we've got a couple support in the corner here that's hitting. All right, guys, let's do this. My drill bit is too uh, too short. All right, let's do this side. I think because I have enough space here, I'm actually gonna bring this a little bit closer here, just to get the support instead of uh, being farther out. Alright, so with the four holes, those are ready for mounting. Well, I need to figure out how to do the spacer thing. Um, in the meantime, we can go ahead and clean this up a little bit more. Alright guys, so here's the bracket. It's not the prettiest, but should do the job. Check out this giant washer. This is actually from a bushing that I kept like, I don't even know how long ago. But it finally came in handy. So the way this goes, it goes like that, right? And then we'll put the fan on top. And that fan will then get sandwiched between, between this washer and this one in the bottom here. And it should be good because, as you guys can see right there, so that's a good amount of surface area. And when it actually gets tightened down, I could pretty much, uh, really tightened down instead of being kind of loose. So it should be good there. I'm gonna go ahead and put back the bolt. These actually don't tighten right away because there is a little bit of play uh, once you put the, the fan on. So they're just hand tight or finger tight. Now the fan should just sit right on top. Then we'll put this on. All right, once that's tightened, we'll go ahead and clip it. Then we'll tighten this. So this is pretty sturdy. So you guys can see I'm holding it from the fan. Uh, let me show you guys some of the gaps that I need to fill. First thing is the side. So you guys can see this thing sticks out about, I don't know, half an inch or so. I'm not sure if I'm gonna trim this down just to get it flat. 
Uh, it looks like I should be able to without compromising the structure of the, the fan itself. Now on the top, it is a pretty big gap that I need to fill. And I also even left a gap here on both, both corner. And that was intentional because the fan was hitting one of the bolts. So I'll have to put some sort of shroud that kind of keeps everything together. Now the bottom is a little bit better. So you guys can see, I would still need to put a shroud here. Uh, but I basically already bottomed it out here. And I could have trimmed this down and then kind of push it down to the radiator. But because again of that bolt that was hitting, I just kind of left it like that. Alright guys, mounts are good, radiator installed, it's pretty solid, so that's good. It is a little bit low right in this area right here, but if you guys can see right there in the back, that's actually my diff mount. So if I bottom out there, I'll bottom out this fan, which is, I mean, if I'm bottoming out there, then I have a problem to begin with. So I feel like this is going to be a good setup. So next up, I'm going to have to mount my electric water pump in this area right here. But for this episode, this is going to be it guys, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.